Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. Are you wondering what catfish bait to use? Well, stay tuned. We're going to talk about it. I think one of the biggest questions that I see repeatedly online and what I get in private messages uh, is what catfish bait should I use? What is the best catfish bait? Uh, that is a question I hear and see and read repeatedly. What we're going to do is talk about some of the different baits and some of the different options out there because there's a lot of them and they really vary depending on what your level of fishing is uh, when it comes to catching catfish. And what I mean by that is if you're new to this sport, uh, you know, a lot of us take for granted that you know what bluegill are, you know where to catch them, you know how to catch them, you know what shad are. You take, we take for granted that you know how to throw a cast net to catch shad, that you even catch shad in a cast net. There's a lot of stuff that some of the more experienced anglers kind of take for granted. So this is really going to kind of be at a starting level, what I'm going to talk about some of this stuff. So for some of you guys who are going to be going, well, gosh, everybody knows that. But the truth is, not everybody knows it. And uh, I kind of have to step back and realize that sometimes. So I'm going to start out with some basic stuff and kind of work my way up to a little more complicated, uh, I guess you would call it level two, three, four, five, uh, you know, stuff when it comes to catfish bait. Now basically, I divide catfish bait into two major categories, and that's either natural bait, that's gonna be something live that swims in the water, or something else. And what I mean by something else, that includes artificial baits like crankbaits, uh, beetle spins, castable type things, plastic worms, and also some of the manufactured baits, some of the pack baits uh, that are out there, stink baits as they're called, and even the grocery store baits. Um, they're basically the way I divide them into those two categories and we'll kind of talk about each of those uh, and which one's better, which one's worse if there is a worse, and which one is your easiest, most affordable option. Well, I'm going to start out with some of the manufactured stuff first. Uh, the stuff that is not live bait or does not swim in the water. And the reason being, for somebody new and starting out, it's probably going to be the most readily accessible bait there is. Uh, this could be going to the store and getting chicken livers, chicken breasts, uh, chicken gizzards. Uh, it could be buying some of the pack bait, uh, stink bait, if you will. Uh, and it could mean using some of your bass fishing lures, uh, trout fishing lures, to try to catch catfish. Now, some of you go, well, wow, there's... You know, how you, they don't hit artificial lures. You'll be surprised. They will hit them. Now, with that in mind, I'm not going to go into a lot of depth and discussion on the artificial world because I don't pursue it. Uh, I honestly believe at some point uh, you may see more people using them, especially drifting and trolling for catfish. But there's actually a surprising number of catfish caught on the lake that I fish on a lot, which is Lake Wiley in North Carolina. And they're caught by bass fishermen, especially in the springtime, as they are beating the docks trying to catch uh, spawning or pre-spawn fish. And uh, there's a lot of flatheads caught on these crankbaits. Uh, some of the areas warm up quicker. Uh, some of these flatheads become active about the same time some of the bass are spawning. People actually catch them on that. Now, is that a viable option for fishing for catfish? I don't think so. And I think it's your best bet, especially if you're starting out. I think if you're starting out uh, and you don't know how to catch any of the fish in the water yet, I think one of your best bets, the easiest thing to do, is go with chicken breasts. Chicken breasts will catch fish. Uh, chicken livers, chicken gizzards will too. Uh, I'm not a big fan of them. Uh, I haven't had as much luck as I have with chicken breasts. Chicken breasts are readily available in any grocery store. Steal one uh, from your wife before she cooks dinner. Cut it up into little bitty chunks, about as big as the end of your thumb. Catfish will hit it. Uh, usually it's going to be blues and channel catfish. Not as many flatheads, but I wouldn't be surprised if some people aren't catching them on chicken breast. Uh, that's going to be your easiest option right off the bat. The stink baits, pack baits, whatever you want to call them, uh, they're another option that you can buy, but you're going to have to have a bait and tackle store around you. Most bait and tackle stores that are near any place that has catfish will carry this stuff. Uh, you can also buy it at Walmart. Most Walmarts will have it, uh, as will your Academy Sports, Dick's, those type places. Uh, and the big Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's will also carry it. Now, this stuff, uh, a little step up. It's a little level two fishing. 
uh, you got to develop a technique for putting it onto a hook. They make a special hook that has like some wire on it. Some people use a uh, like a float, a piece of like foam to kind of get some of it on there with. So a little more involved uh, with fishing with this stuff. I don't suggest that as the best thing to start out with because it does stink. Now it's very effective. I will say that especially once water gets above about 75 degrees. Uh, late spring, summer, it's a great tool for catching channel cat, cats and it will work. So that's an option for you. Uh, you know, the other option out there as far as commercial baits go are some of the things like some of the soap deals. People fish with some different types of soap. Ivory soap is supposed to work. Uh, there's some other stuff out there, some concoctions with Jello and some other stuff. My suggestion is initially stay away from those if you have to go to the store and buy something get some chicken breast start out with that uh, i think that's your best option for catching fish uh, in the beginning when you're learning to fish for catfish now on the other side is the live bait frozen live bait bait that swims in the water where you're fishing if you've got a choice and you have the ability to catch some type of fish from the waters where you're chasing catfish this is without a doubt your best bait to go with. Uh, that fish is swimming in the water, catfish eat it. Catfish are an apex predator. They're eating everything in the waterway, uh, whether it be uh, bluegill, shad, bass, crappie. They'll eat all of them given the opportunity. So any of those that you can catch and fish with uh, are going to be your premier baits when you're starting out. Now, with that in mind, make sure you check out your local laws where you live to make sure that it's legal to use some of these different fish. Uh, some states don't allow you to use bluegill. Most states do, but check your local laws where you're fishing at. Some states may allow you to use bluegill, but not use bass or crappie for bait. Again, check your laws to see how it works, where you're at, and on the bodies of water that you're fishing. And make sure you catch those fish legally. Again, there are some laws pertaining to this stuff. Uh, some places you can catch bluegill in a cast net. Most places you can. If you're going to use them for bait and it's legal, you have to catch them on rod and reel. As far as uh, those different types of baits go, Shad is going to be one that's probably going to be harder for you to catch when you're starting out, uh, especially if you're bank fishing. Uh, it's going to require a cast net. It's going to require the ability to throw a net and to catch, uh, to catch the shad. That's easier in a boat uh, a lot of times. Uh, it, it just because of being able to move around, depth of water, all that type thing. But you can catch them from the bank. There are plenty of bank fishermen, fishermen that catch them regularly. Uh, if you've got an area where there's possibly a boat dock with a pier, you know, a pier or something like that, that can help you out as far as being able to catch them. And also hitting some of these areas before people are around, before they get crowded on the weekend. Sometimes you can get this bait, uh, shad, gizzard shad, thread fin, that type thing. And you know, put it on ice. If you can keep it alive, great. Uh, but putting these things in a Ziploc bag, placing it on top of ice, keeping them chilled, you can usually get two or three days out of them before they start to get too mushy to fish with. Now, there's a lot of bait that you can catch on rod and reel. And this is probably my favorite kind because you get to do some fishing and then you get to use what you catch to kind of climb up the food chain, so to speak. Uh, what we do in our lakes here uh, in North Carolina, where it's legal, uh, we can use bluegill, we can use crappie, we can even use bass as long as they're within the limit, uh, the krill limit, and meet the link limits. Uh, now with that said, that's not going to be legal everywhere. We go right across the line into South Carolina, uh, you can only use the bluegill. But these fish that you can catch on rod and reel are the most fun because you can fish for them and catch them and then you get to use them for bait. One of the ones that we use uh, a lot around here is bluegill, especially in the summertime, becomes a very popular bait. Uh, a lot of people just starting out learning to fish uh, are fishing for bluegill, so that's a good one uh, for you to be using. 
Now another fish we get here in the southeast is a white perch. They're basically an ocean fish that have become landlocked and are a lot of our catfish fisheries. And uh, they're a very good bait. They look similar to a white bass. Most of them are smaller than your typical white bass. But uh, a white bass too, where legal, an excellent bait to use. And another fish that you can catch on rod and reel while you're out there fishing and uh, turn it around and use it uh, for a bait for catfish. Now your option on these things, you can fish them live if you can keep them live. They make excellent flathead catfish bait. But most people are gonna cut them up. Uh, some of these larger white perch and white bass, you can get several pieces of large bait out of them. So uh, they make excellent cut bait and uh, you can catch some pretty big fish on these baits. Now luckily in North Carolina, we can use crappie uh, for catfish bait. Uh, you can do it in Tennessee. You have to meet the creel and length limits. As long as you do that, uh, it's perfectly legal to use them and they are an excellent catfish bait, especially for whatever reason in the spring. I think that's because these fish start to spawn in the spring and I think catfish are keying in on them. Now one of the most popular catfish baits out there, especially in the inner parts of the catfish regions, is skipjack. Everybody loves skipjack. Uh, everybody knows that uh, when skipjack are running, people want to go catch them and stock up on them. People also know that skipjack uh, can be hard to catch sometimes and hard to find. They're a prized fish uh, and they're a great fish. Hard to keep alive. Uh, almost impossible to keep alive. You have to really have uh, your stuff together as far as tanks and stuff. Uh, the guys I know at Shad Shack actually make a, uh, a skipjack uh, bait tank that is designed to keep, keep skipjack alive. And as well as that thing runs, there's kind of a limit on just how big a fish you can put in there to keep them alive. Water temperature plays a big important role in it. So most of the time, uh, when it comes to fishing with skipjack, you're either gonna go catch them, keep them on the ice for a few days and fish with them that way, or you're gonna have to fit, uh, freeze them, store them, so that you've got them later. Uh, there are people that sell them. Uh, there are a lot of bait places um, in the uh, Tennessee River Valley that sell them, Ohio and that area that sell these things, and you can buy them. They're a great bait, they're very oily. After you fish with them all day, uh, you get done and it feels like you have lotion on your hands from just all the oils that are on your hands from these fish. Uh, getting tougher and tougher to come by. They are uh, pursued heavily uh, to be sold to catfish anglers. Uh, one of the downsides with our sport is as it becomes more popular and more and more people are fishing, more and more people are pursuing catfish, uh, there's, there's more fish being caught and taken out of the water for one, more pressure on the fish and more pressure on the baits. And, uh, between that declines in water quality, uh, they're getting harder to catch. So hopefully we can see that turn around because skipjack is an excellent bait for catfish. So as you can see, if you're starting out, there's a lot of options, uh, for catfish bait. Uh, if you're fairly new, uh, stick with the ones that I talked about there in the beginning with, uh, if you have to go with a grocery store bait, go with chicken breast. I will tell you this, uh, I know there's a lot of options of crazy stuff out there, crazy concoctions, different things. All of them will catch catfish at some point when you are fishing. Uh, they will catch them sooner or later. But the ones that I mentioned are good, easy ones when you're starting out with the chicken breast. Uh, some of the pack baits, the shrimp, those will all catch fish very consistently pretty much anywhere you go. As you start trying to get into bigger fish, uh, you may want to graduate up to bigger baits during certain times of the year. And that's when you're going to have to move up to the fish. But the bottom line is don't get in a big hurry to move too fast if you're just starting out. Don't feel like uh, you have to have some of these super huge baits like big skipjack or uh, big white bass or perch or big gizzard chat. Uh, you'd be amazed how many big fish are caught on small bait. So don't get bent out of shape on that right now. Big bait doesn't always mean big fish, uh, but big bait will definitely eliminate a lot of the small fish as you graduate up and try to pursue big fish. If you're trying to keep those little ones off your hook, Big baits are a good thing to go with because uh, the big guys can always eat a little bait, but a little fish uh, can't always eat one of the bigger baits. Now, one thing I will say is there is no secret catfish bait out there. Uh, I think everything possible has been used to catch catfish uh, at some point 
throughout our history of chasing these uh, whiskered fellows. Uh, people have tried all kinds of stuff. Uh, you do a little Google search of weird catfish baits, there's a lot of them out there. And I think a lot of this comes from, one, they are a curious animal and will eat a lot of different things. Uh, but, you know, obviously the, the proved, time proven, time tested baits like shad, skipjack, are going to produce all the time. But I think a lot of people are looking for some type of something, uh, especially when you're new to the sport, maybe not super serious about it yet, uh, that you want to you wanna go fishing. You know, you're sitting here and you go, wow, look, I've got time to go fishing this afternoon. Uh, well, most people don't have a bait a tank full of bait like I do where I can go, you know, stock up, throw some bait on the boat and be gone. You got to deal with something fairly quickly and fairly short notice. And I think that's where people are kind of looking for some shortcuts. Um, some of the store-bought baits are probably your best shortcut. There's no secret out there as far as a secret formula or this or mixing this concoction together. Those things will catch fish. But over time, you will learn that uh, it's really hard to beat the fish that swim in the water where you're fishing for your catfish bait. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing. And here are a couple of more videos that I think you're going to like.